All right, all right, all right. We're feeding the ducks, y'all. MTF King Kong is in the house. How are you? Mr. MTF King Kong, welcome, welcome. It's nice to see you here early and often. All right, we're going to wait for some of the kids to show up, start signing up. We have an incredible show. It's a two guest Tuesday. We've got two different guests talking about two different projects. It's like Taco Tuesday, uh, but it's a two project Tuesday. Okay, so uh, yeah, we'll start the show here in a minute. I'll be right back. What is eating shit Tuesday? Is that a real thing? What's up, SN44 S1? Welcome. Slayer, is it in yet? Is in is what in yet? Is Left House in the house? I think so. Uh, <laughs> much taco may uh, no, but too much taco may cause a lot of the uh, shifting. Shifting indeed. I've shifted my pants before while I was at work. It was terrible. Terrible. Just terrible. Maybe I'll try that today. Not shifting my pants. I was just thinking, I, I'm assuming you wrote shifting to avoid uh, the curse word rules or being blocked or something like that. So I'm assuming maybe I should try that is what I'm saying. Maybe I should try not to curse the whole show and I'll just to change the, the curse words into other words. Yo, 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 sensei bull rajinna. House. Welcome. Welcome. It's a two guest Tuesday. We have two guests coming in today. Uh, first, we have Sturz Merlin joining us at the top of the show. Well, not the top because we're already in it. But, you know, in about six minutes, he'll join us after this first giveaway. We'll talk about what he's been up to. And then Dr. Nobi will be joining us the second hour of the show to talk about the 1111 art project that we've been talking about a little bit here. So hell yes. Hell yes. When someone says something stupid, just shift it from left to right. Hey, Dengus. Welcome, welcome. All right, everybody signing up. I think the song is about to end. Yes, the song is ending. That means it's probably time for us to start the show. It's time! Welcome to the Left Action House, a show, the greatest show in the history of entertainment, hands down, period. 
And not a bad place to pick up some uh, crypto, NFT, WeFi, Web3, all of them. All of the things in this space here, the digital arts, the games, the people, the projects, it's all covered here on the news. Um, and we have a great one for you. Two guests Tuesday, I'm telling you, man. We have uh, Uncle Sturz stopping by here in a little bit. And uh, yeah, and then we have Dr. Noby coming in from the 1111. So before all that happens, let's start the show with a giveaway from the Critter Craft Style. If anybody hasn't jumped in right now, what are you doing? Exclamation point play in the chat. A Marat might get you in. We've got double digits. I like to see double digits on the board before I hit the choose game mode. I'm going to do it now. The game mode has been chosen. We'll go into the old Blades of Doom. Oh, my gosh. Do what Beerapin is doing and go to the square that is least likely populated if you want to survive and win a glorious a prize, which I'm putting together right now. The first prize of the day will be a mystery box from the online end. So that's what you're swimming for or getting sliced up for and missing out on. I apologize if you've been sliced up and you've missed out on it, but that's just the way things go around here. When you're in the grub tank, grub tank, new show that we're going to start here soon where we hear your stupid ideas and then give you crypto for them. If we like them, I really want to do that grub tank. Let's uh, get a committee together and put this together and get on it. I think it needs to happen. Okay, a lot going on in the space, as there always is. We'll talk about it all with our guest assist. Still a hot and bothered crowd of grubbies out there swimming around tough, swimming tough. I think what might help this at this moment is a little bit of music from the Rabbit Hole soundtrack. Just have that going in the background while you guys are swimming hot or hard, often and dirty. First prize of the day is a mystery box from the online in. Courtesy of. Oh yeah, courtesy of. All right, and we have four grubbers left. Everybody go to a square and stay there and see who uh who out you know who wins they can oh go oh no penny back swim swim penny back oh, damn it all right down to three three legends of the pond three former champions three really cool dudes Three heroes of the Grubfish Arena. Oh my god, they all swam right into the blade and it's Dangus! It's Dangus who pulls it off! The very first victory goes to our Dangus. Nice work. All right, and check your whisper there, Dangus. It has been delivered to you. So enjoy that as much as you can wonder what's inside of it. I don't know. It's a mystery box. Just a little bit of a mystery from the online end. All right. All right. Very good. Very good first game here. Um, I will open up the old Critter Craft board so we can get it prepared for the next round of giving it aways. Give, giveaways. Giveaways. Um, and uh, while that's happening, why don't... Well, yes, you guys are doing it. You're entering in. Why don't we look at a quick news story that just uh, was sent to me early from one of our dudes, our man. So I don't know anything about this. Let's just see what it is here real quick. I'm going to pull it up. Okay. Justice Department files antitrust lawsuits against Google over digital advertising. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is this a... Wait a minute. Can we hear this guy? 
Let's turn up the volume, Bob. After Microsoft made its announcement from Google this morning, the tech giant planning to slash 12,000 jobs just days after Microsoft made its own cuts. Rebecca Jarvis is here to break it down for us. Good morning, Rebecca. Nice to see you, Michael. Good morning. And this is a difficult day at Google. The CEO announcing those cuts in a note to employees that the tech giant is cutting 12,000 workers. Uh -oh. It is the latest round of layoffs that impact technology jobs. As you say, Michael, earlier this week, Microsoft- I blame AI. Said, it's the robots. 10,000 of its employees as well. And the companies join a number of others in their industry, including Facebook parent Meta, Netflix, uh -oh. Tesla, and Amazon, who increased hiring during the pandemic on this assumption that the massive growth they were seeing as people were stuck at home would continue to stick around. All right, that has nothing to do with this uh, article though, huh? What do we have here? The Justice Department and eight other states filed a historic antitrust lawsuit Tuesday targeting Google over what they allegedly allege is the big tech giant's monopoly over the online advertising market. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Looks like Google is in trouble. Uh, the lawsuit filed uh, in the Eastern District of Virginia aims to have Google's dominance in the online ad marketplace broken up by having a court compel the, com the company to divest its Google ad manager suite. They also seek an order for the court in, in joining Google from further engaging in any of the anti-competitive practices outlined in their lawsuit. Oh, my goodness. All right. So that's going down, you guys. What's that? What is this thing? It's uh, a few pace of the show info instead of the gifty link. Oh, my bad. Let me grab that for you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty, redoing. Yep, you're right, I did. Try that one, that should work. All right, good deal, good deal. All right, I gotta change this view there. Let's go back and do the viewing of the news channels. Uh, Porsche, you guys, Porsche had a uh, an NFT drop that didn't go as planned. It turned out uh, there's a lot of backlash. Uh, the, the Porsche Mint crashed, apparently. Uh, Porsche is halting the mint of its first non-fungible token NFT collection, the German sports car manufacturer announced on Twitter after receiving negative feedback from its community. Our holders have spoken. We we're going to cut our supply and stop the mint to move forward with creating the best experience for an exclusive community, said the project's official Twitter account, claiming that more information is coming later in the day. The mint opened on Monday morning with each NFT, a digital replica of its I iconic 911 model priced at 0 0.911 ETH. Uh, about fourteen hundred and ninety dollars each in the f uh, hours following criticism of the collection mounted on Twitter, when creators and collectors sharing their thoughts on the company racing into Web three strategy without considering the overall state of the NFT market. Yeah, it's a little bit pricey for uh, a digital car. Um, yeah, so there you have it. People are making uh, mistakes and getting fired all over the lands, people. Very, very strange. What do we have here? Steven Soderbergh present, presents blockchain award to NFT-funded film Kala Dida. Innovative film funding took center stage at the Film 3 on the Mountain Conference held during Sundance. Right on, right on. While Web3 has yet to catch on outside of the crypto uh currency space film three has had a big movement moment under the spotlight spotlight in park city utah i cannot talk at all on saturday with kella did a a new film by miguel foss was named the winner of the andrews bernard award established by renowned director steven soderbergh and decentralized pictures platform the three-part award provides a total of three hundred thousand divides up into three hundred thousand dollar checks and finishing funds for noteworthy films and shorts for up to three filmmakers faust won one part of this award rock and roll i believe here i'm trying to see if the name is gonna pop 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 up 
But the film three, when I did that, um, when I did the article for um, Talk House, you know, I talked, we uh, interviewed the woman who had basically started the whole film three movement. But no, I don't, I'm not seeing her in this article. But I know this filmmaker here that won this award, she talked about him in when and during our conversation so rock and roll rock and roll to the film uh film three and then uh you know sundance uh and steven soderbergh recognize giving out the awards uh to, to uh caladita hell's bells i love it that's good stuff good good stuff all right you guys we do have that critter craft board open wide open our holders have spoken the official dug and a portion will no longer be called douche nozzle. I think that was, they should all speak up on that crap. They definitely should. What's this dangus? Dangus left us. How are you doing on your veggies? Level 10 almost here. Yes. Very, very close actually to um, level 10. Look at, I'm at level nine, halfway to level 10 here. Let's see where where are my farms. What's what I got going on here? Oh, I got some crops that have come in here. Some uh, cotton, some tomatoes, some wheat. What do I got? Nothing cooking here. See if I can make a pizza. Got a pizza in the oven now. That's fun. Uh, what do I got over here? Collect some jam. Can do. Well, what else should I make? Can I make some more jam? No. What about ketchup? Oh, making ketchup. Rock and roll. What should I plant since we're doing the show? I'll just lay down some cotton since that's the most expensive uh, dealios. I wonder if I refreshed, if I would have any more mining my uh, light, lightning bolts since I'm missing all three of uh, them at the mo oh i did not mean to plant that sunflower see that thing's gonna take way too long that's okay nice yes thank you thank you oh you're talking to dangus yeah i got my bank built and hit level six need to save up a bit for that factory yes i know um to get into the p uh pvp mode you have to build a bridge to get to the town so that's that's what i'm or, or what I'm working towards for sure here. Oh, I can see you guys couldn't see what I was seeing, could you? Um, where am I? Yeah, so let's see. What's my next building? I can either go for the textile or the cannery or the feed meal. I'm just going to keep going up because I got the factory going on, as we see. So, all right. Let's go sell some items here and then we'll run that critter craft real quick. Sell, 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 sell. Don't want to sell anything else. Using those as uh, crops to uh, make other things. All right. Can I sell a nothing? Pizza's in the oven. All right. Nothing to sell here, boss. Nice. Well, I guess I could have sold some jams, but no need. No need. All right. All right. That's where I'm at right here. Looking forward to getting my, yeah, I want to get that bridge, but the bridge is far away from me. Look at that. So it's probably going to be a little while till we can pee or I can PVP. Uh, let's check out the bank. See how much current reward 0.933 Matic last week, 0.2. All right. Keep grinding away. Keep grinding away. All right. Fun game. I like it a lot. <laughs> veggie farms. Veggie veggies. Super fun. I'm I'm digging. I dig it. I'm a grinder. I'm grinding bread for sure. Yep. What's that MTF? I also do a lot of bread dingus on your level. You make nine coins and spend three. Yeah, that's a good deal. 
I've just been sort of like making random everything. It's just it, whatever I can do. And then just like planting the sunflowers because that pays out so well. But I'll, I'll usually keep, you know, some wheat going because you can do the bread. There's always something that, that you can kind of keep going, which I like. I like it a lot. Do you have any hidden mushrooms laying around now? Not yet. Not yet. I'm going to stop selling my mushrooms too. I'm just going to hold on to them because I have a feeling I'm going to need them one day. One day. One day. All right. Critica, back open. Uh, you smell great, by the way. Critica is back open. Here, if you want to jump in and play around, you're you're very welcome to. More than welcome. More than welcome. Yes, indeedy. Join on in there if you haven't already. All right, let's run it then. Let's run it. Oh, I see more names coming in there. Very, very good. Very good. All righty. Let's do this. All right, and Doom Blades is happening once again. I like it because it's slow. Slow like me. And low like me. Let it flow like me. Here we go, G. Here we go. It's a grubfish day and everyone's in the pond and everybody's trying to be the king grubfish, you know? But that's not the way life is. Only one of them can be. That's showbiz. Oh. Look at them swimming around. Wishing they could wear the grub crown. Man, grub life is hard. It'd be better if they had grub cars. You can win a rabbit hole promo pack if you are the king of the grubfish pond. Yes, you want to win this round because if you get a rabbit hole promo pack and you get two of a kind in the rarities, you can blend them up and make your way to if you get and can get yourself like four rabbit hole promo trailers. Well, then you can blend those up at the Movie City Cinema for a Movie City Cinema game piece poster. Which is a legendary rarity, which will, you know, stake for many, many tickets inside your theater. So think about it. There's only 25 in existence. I think only three or four of them have been blended for at this point. I don't know. I haven't looked in the last few days. I'll have to take a look. The Gifty Link has been made. Our first guest is waiting in the wings. As soon as this game's over, I'm going to bring him on in here to the fold. We can find out what's happening in the world, the wonderful world of Mr. Stairs. Down to two grubbies. It's getting real, folks. Getting real crazy. Oh, three. There's always, I always, my eyes play tricks on me. All right, down to three. Three legends. Three legends in the pond. It's like that Brad Pitt movie with, uh, you know, the legends of the fall where the three brothers, you know, and they're all like kind of wild with each other. And then like they go to war and one of them dies. And then they like they start sleeping with each other's wife. They all share the same wife. And then the dad like gets all crazy and falls off the porch and then he has to talk with a chalk and a chalkboard. You know this movie? It's incredible. Brad Pitt wrestles a bear and takes the bear's tooth out of its mouth. It's incredible. Oh my god, you guys, will somebody get bladed up? This game is taking forever. We you're being rude. We have a guest waiting. All right, thank you guys. All right, Orlando Duder. Orlando Duder. You done it. Congratulations. All right, check your whisper right now, sir, because you're 
uh, prize has been delivered to you. And the song is over. I love it. Let's bring in our guest, Mr. Sturs. Hey, Left House. How's it going? Happy to be here. Happy to see you. It's been so long, man. How, how's the world treating you? Happy Dude, New the year. world is <laughs> Happy New Year. The world is treating me amazing. Now, is it cold in LA? Are you still in LA? You get your scarf I am. on? I'm still in LA. I'm like, I'm always <laughs> cold. Yeah, it's a little cold. I mean, I'm a little overdressed. I don't have a hat on right now, which is the first day. This is the first day I'm not wearing a Santa hat. So, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, we're ending the end of January here, so maybe yeah. you're in a t-shirt. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Albuquerque, so it actually okay. is colder outside, but I'm in the upstairs, and you know all the heat goes up there, so yeah, I run hot, anyways. Yeah. So, what have you been doing? What's been going on? Well, what has been going on with me is I have been working on what what I'd call will replacement technology. So yeah. <laughs> what happens uh, to your crypto when you die, essentially? How do you transfer your assets? How do you write that in the will? How do you get it to the people that you want and love to have it? All right. Okay. Hold on a second. Let's stop for two seconds here because I want to back this up for everyone to understand here what, where, where, uh, what I'm, my perception here. When I met you, it was through Upland and it was like, uh, fundraiser game i think that's when i met you right around in that time you were yeah. doing a fundraiser um I, you were starting to do work on some projects here i know you were doing stuff with the uh the the nasty hooks and yeah. like doing all this crazy music all these nft projects and, stuff. and then i haven't talked to you in a minute and then i'm like hey what have you been up to and you're like Oh, and wills nft will I like crypto will i'm like wait what like how did we get to, to how did we get to, to to here this is amazing that's a it's a good question yeah good ride. um to bring everyone up to uh, up on the ride yeah we met in upland where i think like i definitely knew about you you were very popular of course with mars and the whole sort of original crew of upland and i started running a um a charity. I, I ran the first large charity event in Upland where we raised over $10,000 for St. Jude's Hospital, which was amazing. It was a very early community that got together and did that. The, the community was much smaller back then. So $10,000 is still a lot, but it was also, it was, it was an incredible amount back then. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it, it, and the reason that I did it is they let me into the USD beta. This had like just opened up. I was like, what's something cool I could do with this? And I was like, ah, oh, like let's, Let's donate to charity. And then yeah. so many people came out and made it happen. Uh, and then, like you said, after that, I did start working. I got one of my friends, Christian, into the uh, our bird bones, as he's known in the Discord world, into NFTs. I was like, hey, let's go make these wax NFTs. They're kind of fun. Like we can, you guys have this weird, you know, sort of call it um, not truly weird owl, but, you know, sort of parody music band where you guys like to do crazy stuff. Like let's, let's do some crazy stuff on chain. So we got together, we made these all sorts of funny stuff. Like our first series. Yeah. We made a number of different things with these music NFTs. You guys can check them out. It's called uh, nasty hooks for you is the collection on atomic hub. We still hang out. We do Christian. And I do shows every, every Tuesday uh, for our, our loyal listeners. And that's awesome. That's um, still happening. Cool. Yep. And so, and then I went to work for Green Rabbit, which is, we, that was the last time we really worked together and interviewed, which yep. I worked there for the tokenomics. I helped uh, Pigwig with a lot of, with some of their smart contracts and helped design and balance the game there for a while. And so that was the full trajectory. And then what happened essentially is one of my college buddies is a, an estate planning attorney, which means that you plan for people's deaths and how they're going to transfer their assets. He's the guy you got to, pay a lot of money to make your life easier. Um, <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever been through the, the death process, you know how painful it can be if someone is just simply relying on the state's default method to transfer assets. It's a, uh, it's quite a process. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you had the idea then to like, you saw like a pathway to, to like crypto, I uh, to blockchain it in a way. I mean, it makes sense, you know, on some level to yeah. me, just like right away I can start to theorize, but uh, yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. So I, another thing that I was doing was I did some work for um, Octavius in Upland. And I understand there was some, some uh, debate about whether he did good or bad things in Upland. And I don't know anything about that, but I do know that on the side, he asked me, he asked me to write some, uh, some smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain, which is, I've always been very interested in Ethereum. It's sort of my, my home in crypto. And so I, I wanted to start learning more how to code smart contracts over there. So he gave me some work essentially helping him start up a, 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 a community around, um, Jesus slipping my name, the name of it right now. But anyways, I, I essentially wrote this, uh, a yield farm, a yield farming, you know, token contract where you, you know, you lock up your tokens and then you can earn yield on them. So yeah. I wrote that on Ethereum. And so then my friend calls me and he's like, Hey, can we transfer, you know, assets digitally using smart contracts to sort of, you know, increase the efficiency of a state settlement? So, you know, transfer the assets much more quickly and skip ports and stuff. And I just sort of, you know, the tra- the token transfer is basically the same. And now all we have to do is wrap this sort of legal meat space contract around it. All right. All right, right, right. I so you're you're raising so many uh, questions in my mind right now because I've like kind of shouted a bunch here, and I've, I just was just talking about it again. Like, like the tools that we've been able to access on Wax versus the tools that like you're able to access on Ethereum. It seems like some of those tools that we've had for a while are now starting to show up, or are, are they've shown up in the Ethereum side of of tools, if mm-hmm. you will, you know, like, do you notice a difference being like being able to like knowing both chains and stuff? Like what's your whole sort of take on like the one versus the other? Yeah. So with wax, I think that wax sprinted ahead of Ethereum, especially with respect to NFTs. Like they had this awesome atomic hub standard, which made the ability to spin up, marketplaces where anyone could sort of permission permissionlessly set up a a different marketplace and it made the tools were a lot for the specific nft purpose on wax were certainly better uh to to start with i think that a lot of and so they were able to sprint ahead and i would say this is in part due to any sort of decentralized technologies journey, they tend to start more centralized and then they decentralize over time. And I think that WAX started with a very specific purpose of doing NFTs for gaming, right? Even the work, what, what does it stand for? The something asset exchange. Um, I thought it was a, a game. What does that W stand for? Maybe is it the world asset exchange? Something like that. Hmm. That's wrong. I, <laughs> I can't. Um, I don't even know it uh yeah I should, I should know but it it started i think they started to do they wanted to do like these uh like these physical nfts like where they would you know allow you to collect collectibles like what's that uh that really famous brand uh that every it starts with a c it always sells out anyways like they could but not everyone like opens these boxes like let's just say jordans or something like that like you're nike a lot of these people just all they want the is the claim on the shoe they don't actually yeah need the shoe box and you could their idea was that you could essentially sort of flip these nfts and like trade them in an open market and then if anyone actually wanted the shoe they could claim it and then they could claim save it, yeah, you know yeah exactly this is something i think that most of us are familiar with and they kind of became like a gaming blockchain a little bit as they deployed because they have the architecture where you can send tons of uh transactions and it doesn't technically cost anything although that leads to other problems around because no one's ever having to spend money, it, it leads to a lot of uh, just sort of bot activity where, because it doesn't cost anything to do anything on chain. And so then it kind of clogs up the chain with bot activity. And then it forces everyone, like I know in the, you know, this time last year, I had something around 4,000 wax stake, which was, you know, something like $2,000 to be able to kind of like use the chain at my, at my leisure, you know, because otherwise I would just run out of resources every day. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, which is sort of, I guess, like the back side, like, you know, almost like the dark side of the gas conversation, right? Like, it's like, there's like, oh, there's no gas fees on wax or whatever. But like, if you're not staking up or whatever, then you're like, 
having issues or it's not going to run right or whatever it seems like and, and especially at that time when everybody when it was more congested the prices were way higher similar yeah to like what's what was going on on ethereum with the prices being like out the out the window um with the uh you know the crash of uh the FTX and this and that and how it like seemed to have like shifted the the landscape from like you know the uh, Solana summer or whatever is everyone <laughs> shouting about like into like you know so much of it seems to have moved over to uh, like Polygon you know like that's now like the big like conversation or whatever mm -hmm. um, and then like man there's a lot of other chains that I see that are popping up that are like you know, like ETH, like friendly sort of like Aptmos, uh, what I'm, I'm trying to think of. There's I think you're saying app, you also, so I wouldn't say that Aptos is uh, ETH friendly. I, I'd say it's a okay. competitor to it's Ethereum. Competitor. It's like a, it's a, it's another layer one like Solana, right? Because I, I, you know, it's interesting. So maybe you weren't saying Aptos, maybe you're saying Avalanche because Avalanche no, yeah, is I'm written. Thinking, I'm, yeah, I'm mixing them up. I was saying, I, I said the wrong one, but you're right. Yeah, there's Arbitrum, there's... Uh, Arbitrum, there we go. That's a Esmos, layer two, yeah. Optimism, you know, like there's just a handful of yep. these that I'm like, here. I hear good things about, but I don't know, you know, like much about, you know, a little bit. Yes, more. those things are on there. Uh, so yeah, I love layer twos as kind of why I think I kind of it. So in my opinion, more or less, I've thought for a long time that Ethereum is one. I was betting really big on wax coming through and also EOS at the beginning of last, last market's bull run. Obviously EOS was a complete flop. Uh, that seems to be completely dead. And wax is a, is a, is a fork of that. I, towards the end of, um, let's see, 2022. So just last year, about a year ago, I started I, I, over time, just seeing the way um, that projects struggled, like if they weren't in sort of the cabal of the, like the accepted, you know, pink GG with their atomic hub and like the founders, like it became very hard to, to truly be an independent sort of person on wax. It felt like there was a very uh, controlled sort of, wax ecosystem and that started to kind of rub me wrong it just kind of felt like they're again it kind of felt like a cabal to me i didn't it felt less and less permissionless to me over time and more like a kind of i feel like the, the the i felt like the owners of wax essentially more or less it was like their chain it, and it gets to this idea of credible neutrality around like if you're going to be building something, you don't want it to be sort of controlled by one person. And like a famous example of this is Facebook, because when they first opened up, they had this awesome third party marketplace where you could come and build your apps on Facebook and get really big and get access to all their users. And then one day they just shut it all down. And they're like, this is actually ours. Like we own this. And then they, they sort of like replicated everyone's gains and then cut everyone out. And I don't, I'm not saying that anyone would ever do that on wax, but it kind of feels like the same sort of vibe. Like, you're building on top of, I don't know if it's William, something like that is his name. It feels like their, their ecosystem, it, it, it didn't really feel like a community ecosystem to me. And so that started to, to kind of turn me off. And I started just moving back over into the Ethereum space. Right. Yeah. Where I feel, a, I feel, I feel a really big community vibes there. It's like a very tons of developers, tons of different projects. Um, and I, uh, sorry, yeah, that's that's why I started moving towards it. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like yeah, I jumped absolutely. No, topics I mean, there. Like, uh, you know, Wax is a small corner of the NFT space. Like you said, it's a, it's kind of game centric. Uh, a lot of the uh, the the things that you're saying there, I've heard other people have issues with. You know, I mean, like the, it's merited, and it's all it's, it's ever growing and ever changing. But like, uh, you gotta find where you where you fit or where you feel comfortable. Yeah. You gotta find your tribe, your people, you know, like and uh yeah, like it makes sense to me. Like it uh, it doesn't it doesn't to me it's like they're they all have to they're all the competition of between blockchains and stuff and the different sort of like avenues that the they sort of like kind of tread down all seem necessary, you know, and uh 
it's good. To, to, I, would, I was watching um, like the Web3 show, another streaming show this morning, and they were talking about like Coinbase's NFT marketplace just kind of like mm. not working, you know, like it's it's it just sort of didn't work. And I guess they, they may be like taking it offline for a while or something like they might oh, be really? or something like that. But like like how much was spent and stuff like or you know, they made through there was like super low. And it's like you think about like the number of wallets like that they that, that they have access to, and they basically the, you know this other stream they were saying like they basically just kind of copied OpenSea instead of like doing something mm -hmm. innovative in their own way. That's what I see lots of like you know uh, products or projects doing in the space is like they're we're emulating what we know from before and trying to bring that into the blockchain space, but then it's like this whole set of other tools and ways to think about it. And it's like, finally, you know, like it's taking one person can have the idea and create the thing. And then it takes a while for everybody else to understand what they and how to use what they've built or whatever it seems like, you know, like, and then like, there's, that's the first layer of tech people that are going to understand that. And then like the, the space, you know, half of the people, maybe even third of the people are going to get it at first. The other people come later, you know, like, it's like, it, it ripples out. Right. And it takes time for these things. I did an article about like uh, film in the Web3 space or whatever. And I, mm. and I did one two years ago and then I did it again for the same magazine like recently. And so I went back to that article that I read and I saw exactly that. I'm like everything that I every company that I had talked to and interviewed every project, it was like just a copy of everything that had already existed. But with some blockchain like icing around the edges but not really function use utilizing it in the way that we can now or are now you know like so it's interesting yeah, yeah. to see the growth and we need so i i feel like yeah i'm just saying it's it's all necessary even the even the rugs even the scams even the things that break <laughs> you know like it's impossible to to go forward without it i think you hit on it ton of interesting points there i think that uh what you're saying with the uh with coinbase they spent all this money on the the nft project and then it didn't do anything right because i think like you said like they're like OpenSea, but they have sort of a custodial aspect to them and that was supposed to be i think that that was their supposed to be their differentiator there which definitely didn't play out it, it, it they weren't able to get the I think it really boils down to they weren't able to get the the traction on there because you you I I've never used it but it, it seems like you have to to list it on there you have to put your NFT in Coinbase's custody and then it's just such a smaller market compared to the world because Coinbase is mostly a US thing and then right. everywhere else they have their own exchanges so it, it just it, yeah it just didn't work out at all and then to the point of like things needing to sort of like work their way through. I think in some ways we're seeing that with Ethereum and these ideas on these, I, I'll call it a more centralized blockchain on wax where they sort of sprinted down these channels that have this very focused thing. These ideas are working their way back to Ethereum as they essentially scale through their layer twos, Arbitrum, Optimism, and people are starting to use those now. But that's again, that's still so confusing to people. It's like, wait, so I'm using Ethereum, but I'm on this other thing that's called a layer two, but it costs yeah. way less gas. Um, and so yeah. it's like, it's, I don't understand how we get to like the masses when we're in the middle of a conversation like this. It's like, dude, all of that is stuff. As long as I've been in the space, it's just so much information to ingest, you know, and it's like, do I want to go down that that rabbit hole to take all that on? So the way I end up doing it is like I go in a little bit and a little bit, you know, but I'm like, oh, God, mm -hmm. once I get in a little bit, I'm like, shit, that's a lot. I can see what I need, you know, the, the pathway down it and to really, and, you know, and there's NFTs, there's all there's marketplace, there's all of these things on each one of these chains, you know, and I'll see like a article that's like oh you know like this surges of nfts on this block on this chain you know or whatever and it's like how do you even <laughs> how do you even know to where you know like that that was it, like there was going to be a release on that chain it's it, it's hard to keep up with everything 
Yeah, no, I'll definitely yeah. agree. I can remember when Solana came out and they started doing NFTs on there. I was like, how do people even know? And I think it is like the hardcore people that are just hanging out there. And then there's been a similar run I've heard with uh, NFTs on Aptos that you mentioned earlier, which yeah. they had that that really bad launch. They were the so Aptos. If people aren't familiar, they were they've actually they're spun out of Facebook devs who made Libra, which obviously was shut down, and then they eventually left Facebook. And they had Libra had can made this uh, programming language called Move. And that it's supposed to be really awesome to develop on. I've never tried it. Um, and so people, you know, after this launch, some people were really excited about it. And then I think they just started building NFTs on there. And now there was a little run because that was launched back in October. Makes sense. It's been, what, three or so three or so months. They probably, someone's probably made a little marketplace. Someone's made a little NFT project. And now there's a little uh, NFT boom over there going on. There's always a bull market somewhere, they say. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our, uh, DeFi kingdoms, I you know can kind of heard about that one came late. Harmony, that's the blockchain it was on. But like when it was happening, it was happening, you know. And then it just like mm-hmm. tanked, and then like nobody yeah they got hacked anymore. Oh, that's yeah right. they they had a bridge hack. Yeah, they were huge. At, so I was at ETH Denver last year, yeah. and Harmony through this huge private event at this club called Temple with um, they hired dead mouse to come play and he's something like half a million just uh just for a private show so they spent at least half a million and then they got everyone in there and stuff so that was uh that was a pretty crazy event and they were they were going pretty the, the harmony team was going pretty hard in there uh yeah. but then probably four to six months later there was a big it might have been less than that uh yeah somewhere around four months later they had that big bridge hack and then i haven't heard basically anything about that chain since then pretty yeah same um, so getting back to, uh, to trust or to the project you're, you're working on with the wills, like, so is that, um, intertwined with NFTs then? Yeah, a bit. So what's, yeah. so our first, so what it allows you to do, right. Is if you've ever been through the process of in the U S where you transfer your assets through the legal system, it's called probate. It takes upwards of six months can take as long as two years and it's quite expensive to hire lawyers. Da, 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 da. So it's easier if you have a will, but that still goes through the government. So what we actually use is trust law. So I'm sure that you've heard of trust law before. Sure. Exactly. So trust, it, you tend to associate with like rich people, right? <laughs> like mm-hmm. Rich people have trust, but actually we can take this legal tool and deploy it for anyone. And that's what my co-founder has been doing for the last 10 years is he's been writing trusts every day for wealthy individuals typically because they're the ones it makes more like the more assets you have the more it makes sense but for us it makes sense because it allows for the private transfer of assets legally so now you have a legal method to transfer your it can be coins it can be nfts as you mentioned and you can send it directly to your beneficiaries without custody so that's Gotcha. We're, we're you know, a non-custodial solution, a way to transfer your assets without the need to necessarily trust anyone except our smart contracts. Is Truster up and running? Has this? Have you executed this uh, yet? Has it happened yet or not yet? Uh, I have, but it is not public, no. Okay. Um, okay. Gotcha. So I am still building out the contracts. I have some early versions of them. The tests are working. I have all sorts of things around I have the website up and running. Essentially though, what we're doing though, is we're, we are in the process of really developing the language and stuff. Like, I don't know if you've ever used TurboTax or one of these kind of like semi-legal products. Cause that's kind of what we are. We're like a legal, legal product, but we're not a lawyer. And they'll have all these like definitions and stuff. You're like, I don't know what the hell is, what is a successor trustee? Or like, what is, who should I assign as my trustee? And we have to like define all this language to help people out without giving them legal advice. And so we're kind of working through some of that while I also develop the smart contracts. I'm going pretty deep on Solidity. I've done a number of threads. <laughs> if anyone's a developer, they could they could check out my Twitter where I'm trying to like write more about Solidity code. Yeah. Right. Which is the programming so, language on Ethereum. So then you've <laughs> done it. You've done it with yourself then? Is that what you're what you're saying then? Like are you the you you're the test? Yeah, so I am going to be, uh, we will each be our first customer. Yeah, we are going to be the first customers. We will be our, our own customers. And are so, yeah, the idea is. I try to off you to see if it works or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just to test it fully. I'd be worried, man. 
You didn't think about oh, that. I can no, tell I didn't, didn't think about that. that. No, I, I hadn't thought about that. That's a good one. Uh, are they going to kill me? Jeez, it's possible. I, well, the luckily, only way to the, test it fully, you know, like. Is to actually die. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with, I, I have written tests that work through it, and I pretend I die, but like even though I haven't. Person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, but that's a good point. I'll think about that as I go forward. Because. Yeah, but we've been able to transfer. So what we're doing right now is we're actually creating, we're not actually transferring the assets themselves. So that's like the long-term goal. The reason we're not is mostly just out of an abundance of caution because um, you can, you can right, create permissions so that some smart contract can transfer assets on your behalf under certain conditions, which would be yeah. your death in this case. So we're not doing that yet. What we're doing is creating a legal wrapper that just says, Hey, all these assets belong to these people and it's on chain and anyone can go or anyone that wants to knows how to can go see where this is and prove that I'm the beneficiary of this trust. So the idea is to create the legal wrapper. Eventually we'll get to the transfer mechanism. The abundance of caution being third party audits are very expensive and we take people's, you know, digital wealth seriously. And so while I could write the all the stuff that does it, I can't initially pay for the third party smart contract audits that, that I would want to say like, oh, it's very safe. To, or at least some third party has looked at our contract, said it's safe to transfer your assets as far as they can tell. I know, right. I get technical. Yeah, <laughs> no, but it makes sense. <laughs> there, I, I'm sure it's like, I, it, it sounds nothing but technical. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's, it's law, putting, it's code. Know, well, the, that, yeah, all of that stuff to like, you know, the life stuff to the, yeah, the law stuff. Like it's just, a, there's a lot that, that goes into it. Uh, have you come across, is there anybody else in, in this, doing this yet? Have you, have other people you can communicate, talk to, compete with? What's going on on that level? That's a good question. Yeah, there are a number of competitors. Uh, they don't do exactly what we do. So, the original competitors were mostly for Bitcoin. And the problem with Bitcoin is it's not a, what we call Turing complete. It's not a full smart contract language. So it's a scripting language. So you have to essentially have people custody your assets on the Bitcoin network. So there are, you know, a state, it's called a state planning is like the general field. There are state planning solutions, but the problem with them is they're custodial. And so, where we're different from them is obviously non-custodial. Our goal is to move your assets through smart contracts. And again, all you have to trust is our smart contracts. Because that's the way it should yeah. be. You shouldn't have to trust some third party that they're going to, like FTX, <laughs> where right. that they're going right. to, that you have to trust them. Uh, and then on Ethereum, there is another company, but what they're doing, we consider quite strange. Uh, from a legal point of view, there is no such thing as a digital will, and they build themselves as a digital will. So just in the US, that's not a, that's not a thing. It's not legal. So that's why we use trust law again. Um, but they also have this weird thing where like, so what we both take this similar approach using a technique called a dead man switch. So the way that you prove life to the chain, just to start with, is that you just show up and you click a button and say, hey, I'm alive. You sign it with your private key or whatever. You just say, hey, I'm alive. You know, yeah. you just check in every now and then. Their thing does this uh, payable on death. So essentially, if you don't show up and hit the button, it says it automatically transfers the assets. Oh, uh, from a legal point of view, yeah, that can create a lot of problems. Like if you yeah, just what if you're on vacation, you get high, you, you forget. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got shit. It went to all my beneficiaries. Yeah, that's that's a problem, oh, and that, it actually creates tax implications. It's called a gift tax. And then if they actually tried to send the assets back to you, it's a gift tax back to you. Oh my so, God. so we haven't seen anyone doing exactly what we're doing. It's just, I, and it seems like everyone that we talk to is like. It's a really, it's kind of an obvious idea. And so yeah. that that's really how it came around is like, we went well, so to the voting machines. God damn it. Like what the <laughs> hell? Yeah, yeah but that's political. That's oh man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to convince everyone. <laughs> At least all we have to do is like, yeah, oh, we're, we're trying, our focus is people who are already using this technology. Yeah. If you are at the stage of your life where you no longer believe that you're indestructible, and that you might die and you maybe you want to have a plan for what happens to your assets because that's another thing is a lot of times these assets are lost from you know losing your private key or death unexpectedly it can be very hard for your loved ones to access this 
Yeah. <laughs> like, it, like, I know most of the crazy shit that I do is completely unaccessible to my wife. If I were to just pass away, it's like, yeah, that's gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're never yeah, gonna figure it out. Existence, yeah, it's all in the <laughs> digital world, computer. Like, I get it. Yeah, I don't exist if I, if I pass out. Yeah, it's crazy, nuts. Um, are you still? Do you still dabble in Upland at all? I I do. Um, I check in every day. I help a lot of people with their um with their buildings. I stake sparks. I've been building out Alamo Square for the last. I don't know, three, four months just building other people's properties. No one's building in Alamo Square right now. So I started looking around Alamo Square. And so now I'm staking to people building around Alamo Square. Yeah. Uh, that still seems to be the main thing to do to me. I haven't bought, I haven't been able to get a car. I've signed up every time. Uh, so I can't race. As far as I understand, maybe I can race. I've never actually just tried to click the button, but I assume I need a car. You need a car to race. Yeah. I got lucky, not this past okay. uh, car yeah. deal, but the last round, I got two cars in in the, the I got in the line. What? I could have gotten one this last <laughs> one, but I missed it when I came back. I saw it there, and then the, it refreshed. It was like the button was there, and then it refreshed, and it was gone. I was like, I totally forgot to check after the show, and it was the, I could have gotten a third car, which you need three to open up the uh, showroom to sell cars. So that's where I'm like hoping to get to. Mm. So you're trying to start up a, have you always wanted to be a car dealer? Am I remembering correctly that you had this idea for a while? No, 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 I never wanted to be one, but I I decided to open up a block explorer shop and I'm like, oh, why, this is awesome. It's so easy. Like it's just an extra revenue, you know, it's usually, I'm not selling too many of my own, but it's usually people that come in, put theirs up for sale. They sell them and I get a little percentage, you know, and then I do my little payout every month and it's like. No, it's fun. Why not have a car? I want to have every business I can now. If it, oh, okay. Yeah. And where is like, your you know, back in the early Where's your block explorer? Where where is it? It's um mm-hmm. it's in Corona. It's uh Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right next to right next to the Mars um Yep. Vista, yeah, Buena yeah. Vista. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's called Cube Ramblers is the name of the, the shop. Cool. So uh yeah, yeah, check it out. Um um, actually, we have we have another guest coming on in here. Um, they're in the green room right now, but they're also intertwined into the uh, the Upland uh, project as well. And so it's um, Dr. Noby. Do you know Dr. Noby from the Eleven Eleven project? Yeah, so- I heard him on the Up Upex podcast. Yeah, yeah. When he was first launching their NFTs, I think he came on there a number of times, oh, and yeah. I think I hung out backstage with him a number of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the man. He does uh, some stuff with. Uh, thank me later. I'm going to bring him into our conversation here. Hello, Doctor Noby. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you. So it seems like you and Stairs have met before. We we have met. Yeah, like you said in the uh, in the Upix podcast backstage, but I don't think I've ever seen his face before. So when I when I saw the face and I saw the <laughs> yeah. name, I was like, Oh, is that him? So g- good to actually see you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good to meet you, Doctor Nobby, or see yeah, you. Well, there's so what? What is all this going on? I just opened up uh, Upland here, and there's like this whole there's a bunch of voting uh, things to vote on right now. Oh yeah, oh. carnival ornaments. Carnival ornaments. Ooh la la. I was actually planning on participating in that, but uh, in the 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 ornament creation there. But yeah. I knew that if I if I put that on my plate with all the eleven eleven stuff, I would just. I would yeah. have no no hair left right now. I would have pulled it all out. <laughs> yeah, no, no uh, kidding. I know I, 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 that Upland does that to me a lot where I'm like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, wait, what am I doing? That's just going to take up a whole like week yeah. of my time or something, you know, like, yeah, I, I've had to turn down in my mind projects that I'm like, that sounds like fun. But if you can manage to do it, I mean, it's a great source of income. Like, uh, yeah. I think land for land. Um, <clears throat> he made a lot of the Christmas ornaments, uh, uh-huh. in 2021. And, um, yeah, w- at that point, uh, I was way, way beyond him in, in terms of, you know, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, net worth. Uh, and now he's like doubled, tripled me. So, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good way to make income if you can. Yeah, that's it. 
So yeah, this is the the shop here, Stir. So the it's one six nine Buena Vista is the address for it. Okay, so it's on Buena Vista. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see you there. Yeah, runs right towards into that big park here. But yeah. Very cool. Stars, if you want to hang out, you're more than welcome to hang out uh, for the conversation. But if you, you know, I've already kept you for an hour. I'm sure you've got a busy life out there. If you, if you got to go, you got to go. I do um, need to run. It was great to meet you guys. Thanks for hosting. And we can catch up anytime. Left us. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to you uh, later in the day. It was great. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of the show. Later, guys. Take care. All right, talk to you later. All right. So, Dr. Nobi, how are you? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm, yeah. uh, <clears throat> stressed, but the stress is easing as I'm catching up with things. Uh, yeah. 11, 11 has been, um, awesome, but you know, I've created a monster. So there's a, <laughs> there's a lot to keep up with and do. And, uh, but it, it is all worth it because, you know, it's progressing really well. And, um, you know, Upex World hasn't even launched yet, so technically, yeah. the thing that it exists for doesn't even exist yet. Um, but we're already starting to get some traction, which is great. So I'm I'm really excited to see, uh, you know, where it goes soon because Upex World, I think, I can't say for sure, <clears throat> but I think they were supposed to uh, have their launch at the end of this month, which is coming up. Um, oh if not, wow! If not, then probably next month, but. I'm not an official spokesperson. I can't say anything with certainty yeah. there. Right. Yeah. But they're getting closer. That's uh, getting that's close. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So um, I got a, an embarrassing confession to make here. Okay. My first piece went up the before piece. I find I, my, I have Mars on the show. I hadn't talked in a long time. And he was like, yeah, your piece was up. It just closed. I totally spaced on the fact that I put the piece up and missed the entire thing, I would have been like buying them, giving them away on the show, like the whole damn month. And then it was like, I had to beg Mars to give me one, you know, or whatever. So, yeah. um, but I see, you know, the second piece is up in the auction part, but yeah, I was just, I, I, I was biting my tongue that whole day. I was like, what an idiot I am. But I mean, so yeah, I missed out on the first round. But uh, yeah, so that's my and that's my confession. So yeah, it it happens. I mean, everybody, you know, <clears throat> like that's kind of uh, a mechanic of the whole system that's kind of built in. Is like yeah. you do have to be on top of it, and if you're not, then that's it. You know, and it it does suck to have that moment of realization where you're kicking yourself like, ah, oh, I should have been there. But you know, that further rewards the people who were there, yes. and you know, you can. You can make uh, offers to them, you know, like you said, with Mars or uh, I think on NFT Hive, you can actually put up a buy offer. So you can just say like, OK, on this template, if any of those go up <clears throat> for, um, you know, X amount, um, I want that immediately. So, yeah, you, you, you can you can get it um, that way, too. So, yeah, that's right. there's definitely a secondhand uh opportunities there no, as well. it's like you said it's cool because if I, I i swear like i i finally like had to like rationalize it for myself that i'm like honestly if i would have known i would have bought so many of them and given so many so like it makes it rare now that i didn't do that it's the way yeah I'm feeling about yeah it. So it's like good in that way so i'll take it yeah take and the thing is yeah, so so when I when I make those array pieces, so there's like you see here, there's the array, the pyramid, which has eleven levels. Um, the eleventh of which is technically the the pinnacle, the very top, which will be its own category. Um, yeah. But with with the array, just to recap, uh, mm -hmm. the array pieces are unlimited. Um, you can get as many as you want for the the given window. So right now there's seventeen uh, days left on the array. Get as many as you want. Um, they're all uh, 11 wax each. And in w when I create these, so what I do is I get the the piece from the artist um, and, you know, get their permission to reproduce it and everything. Um, and then I mint the NFT uh, and then create the drop. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I create the, I guess, technically the template before I mint the NFT. Then create the drop. And... Uh, in the drop, you can just split the earnings automatically. So you can say like, so 11.11 takes 11% of each 11 wax purchase on the drop. Um, and then 89% goes to the artist, um, to their wallet. So 
for example, if you were there buying your own piece, which you can totally do, there's no rule against it. You can bid on your own piece at, at auction in the pyramid, whatever, you know, do it as much as you want. And for your own piece, you're essentially getting an 89% discount buying as many as you want because 89% of that comes straight back to you. So I do think it's a good idea for people to invest in their own art there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's awesome. Yeah, I like the whole setup and system, and I like the fact. Is it the is it the these the array, or is it like the which ones, or is it all of the pieces you're you'll be able to like burn and and uh, add to like like it, you know a building or something like that in Upland or your car, or like add the art to some. That that's what's happening, right? Like you, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So so. Every piece of art that you see in 1111, you'll be able to um, print that image on something in UpX world. Um, it's just the, it. func the functionality between the array and the pyramid is a little bit different. So in the array, um, so these are like you're seeing there, unlimited 11 wax each drops um, that, that are unlimited for that period of time and then they end forever. Um, but in order to create something in the game, you will have to burn one of those array pieces. That's it. Okay, so, cool. So because they are uh, unlimited for that period of time, they're, they'll be very common in, in, in uh, relation to the pyramid and guild and pinnacle NFTs, which are all one of ones. Um, and those one of one pieces go up for auction. And the reason you want to win that auction is because in the game, you won't have to burn that NFT. Um, you can just go as a player, you can go into the what we're calling the originator. Um, you can go in and uh, look at a menu basically and say, okay, I want this item. Um, and again, the game hasn't launched. This functionality is a little ways out. Uh, so get in now. But when, when, it, when it comes, you'll be able to say, okay, I want a t-shirt with this image on it. And if it's an array piece, you'll have to you'll have to own that NFT and burn it. But if it's uh, a pyramid piece, you you don't have to own the NFT. You just say, okay, I want that, and then you you pay um, in USD. It'll be I don't know how much, uh, but it'll be like an in-app purchase in you know Clash of Clans or whatever game you can download on your phone. Same idea, um, but the difference is instead of all of that money going to the developer um or the you know the game studio what we're gonna do is let's say just for for this example it's a dollar and 20 cents to get that item yeah so 20 cents of that will go to upx world for the the item itself the the blank piece um and then a dollar will go to 1111 for the art and of that dollar that comes to 1111 uh, 89%, so 89 cents of that dollar will go to the owner of that NFT with the corresponding art. So that's why you want to bid on this art because you're going to get recurring revenue whenever somebody goes into that store and makes a purchase to get that art on an item. Very cool. Yeah. So what you're seeing here is the pyramid level two. All these pieces are at auction. Um, and we're only up to level two right now because this has to grow. Uh, eventually, I think it's going to be October of this year when we have all 11 levels filled out. Yes. Um, and then on November 11th, so we launched November 11th of last year. And then on November 11th of this year, I believe is the date when the first pinnacle piece will be sold. Wow, crazy. Yeah, this is a monster. Yeah, yeah. It's very cool, though. Yeah. So so everything you're looking at there, I have to go through and do, like, there's the whole website aspect of it, and then there's the whole blockchain aspect of it. Yeah. So, like, I have, I have to up, up, update everything on the website to reflect what's going on on the blockchain. And on the blockchain, I have to be, like, the website I can actually do faster because I can just, you know, run through it. I, I get my rhythm down and I can do it. And inevitably, I'll make mistakes and have to go back and fix them. But on the blockchain, everything is permanent. Like you do it, it is done, you know, so yeah, yeah. I have to be real careful. And, you know, it can be kind of tedious and tiring. But hopefully, you know, 
like I said, it's already starting to pick up and the game hasn't even launched. And there's the um uh have you played the the alpha yet? There's an alpha version. No, I haven't. No, I want to. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm I can uh I can send you the link. I don't know if I'm technically allowed, but I'm sure TML won't mind. Yeah. Uh but uh but yeah, it's the the eleven eleven building is right there when you when you first spawn into the game. So yeah, it'll be one of the first things people see and want to check out. I actually uh, have been in chats with uh, thank me later a little bit. We actually owe him a, a message, but uh, um, about uh, trying, cause you know, we have our, um, our movie city cinema, which is our, uh, it's a watch and earn system. It's also a play and earn thing, but uh -huh. the goal and the plan when I came into Upland always was to bring, um, you know, a movie theaters in. So I started talking to him about doing that. And it was like, he was like, oh, it's perfect for the arts district. So I think we might end up being like, you know, neighbors or something like that. Yeah. Like the theater and the your gallery. So that would be really cool. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think we, we talked about this briefly last time yeah. when I, uh, you were telling me about this project and I was saying, yeah, it sounds like it might be something for Upex world. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Even like the way, yeah, there's there, maybe there's a, a way we can collaborate. Um, oh, for sure. Which would like even give, you know, like more utility to the pieces or something like that. Maybe there's some way we can like, you know, do, uh, we'll talk about it off the air. Oh, we can talk about it here. I don't mind. We, I mean, yeah, no, I just don't have the idea full of, you okay. know, both <laughs> happening right now in my mind, as you're saying this stuff, I'm going, Hmm, maybe we can, you know, but I don't know what it is fully. Yeah. Yet, but, yeah. But it's, you can see we could come up with something, you know, like, cause like, you know, in, in our world, it's like, we have uh, the game piece uh, posters which uh, I think all mine are, wait, let's see. I think they'll show up here. Yeah. So like these are different posters of a different rarity. So like maybe there's a way that like we could do like, you know, where the artist pieces, like people could burn or, you know, somehow turn them into game piece posters or something like that with special limited rarities or something like that. You know what I mean? I don't know what it yeah. is, but no, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we, we could do like, poster collabs or like even ticket art or yeah you know the possibilities are, are endless and that's another yeah. thing that i'm really excited about you know once the game actually launches it's launching on steam first um okay, and yeah. so right now i'm actually still having trouble finding artists for this which is another aspect of the monster i've created is that it's going you know it's just like i set it yeah. loose and it's going so I have to right now, because we are pre-launch of the game, I have to actively find artists and explain this stuff and tell them, here's why yeah, you yeah, really yeah, should sorry. do this. And, yeah, the game. you I'm know, sorry. yeah, that's OK. Yeah. Um, but hopefully once the once the game launches and people are able to play around and, you know, see the 1111 building and go, oh, what's this? They'll just go to the website and be like, oh, yeah, I want to be a part of this. And then I can stop, you know, trying to pimp this project to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like a there's a place where yeah, where people can find it. Yeah. You know what you're saying? Uh yeah, yeah. so you've been in here, you've ran around in in it and stuff. Like do you like does it do you think that this is going to change the the game for Upland? Like do you think this will bring in a lot more people or what's your what's your feelings on it all at this point? So, what you're seeing right here is um this is the upland meta phase um like pre pre alpha like one of the first things they did with the not even really with the game but in development of the game um and what you're about to see is the very first iteration of the 1111 building that was ever seen in 3d oh wow cool um there it is oh wow. so they, they just hit it inside that building and you can destroy the building um but uh yeah, that's awesome now i've distracted myself what was your question i'm sorry <laughs> oh just like how, what's your take on this whole uh Upics oh yeah, world yeah and like what 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 do you think it'll do for the upland ecosystem yeah so the reason i was mentioning that is because this is not where you're going to see the 11 11 building in the game itself okay so the game itself is not mapped to upland it kind of just looks like you know, like a, a desolate Mars-esque kind of terrain. You're you're just oh. on this planet. 
Um, and then the upland metaphase is one of the things that you can interact with within, or I guess outside of that environment. So UpX world is kind of like the way I explain it to people and the way TML has explained it to people and me is UpX world is like a mall and um, 11, 11 and the Hyde Park ninjas and um, URX racing. These are all stores in the mall. Got it. Oh, so it, perfect though. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Right. At, yeah. That clears up some things in my, that, that I didn't know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So a, as well as the Upland metaphase will also be a store in the mall. So nice. 11, 11 kind of exists on the same level as Upland in that regard. Um, but in terms of, you know, exposing all these different things to a lot more people, yeah, absolutely. Because it, it kind of works like a mall in that way too, where, you know, we're having this new city, new, new mall built in the city. Everybody knows about the mall. Probably not everybody know, knows about every store in the mall, but once they go to the mall, they're going to see all the stores. You right. Know? And that's sort of like kind of the, what, how I sort of see Upland in the future is like, so many of these things like there's so many like you could stumble into a, a building and be like wait what what is this you know and then like yeah. it, you're into some other mall or you know thing or you know whatever it is you know like different art projects or projects yeah. or yeah like so to the point where like you wouldn't know you couldn't just like the you know your city that you're in like you don't know everything that's going on in your city is impossible you know like right. yeah like that like i feel like and it's kind of you know it's kind of there ish there not you know fully but like just like there's a lot of things that go on in upland that i don't know about that's what i'm saying you know like right. i know there's corners and people that are doing things that i'm not i don't know anything about yeah so yeah. At, as as these things start to integrate with each other um they're going to feed each other each other's audiences in that way yeah so obviously you're not going to get a hundred percent conversion rate some people are not going to want to participate in 11 11 and that's fine um but some people will you know and th they'll they'll come to upx world from uh upland which is the majority right now the majority of um people who are who who know about Upex World and who know about Eleven Eleven and are are into these projects are into it because they were into Upland and uh, they know TML from the Upland community and TML is starting the Upex World thing. Yeah. So right right now it's still pretty linear in terms of how things are going, where people are coming from. Um, but once Upex World hits Steam, then you have exposure to the entire Steam community and people who like open world video games and want to check out metaverse stuff and so we're going to have a whole new door opening that's going to allow hopefully a huge flood of people um to experience upx world and 1111 yeah so upx yeah world. they have a they have a website up now don't they or no yeah i think it's just upx.world i don't know how up to date oh, yeah, it, is. Here it is yeah i'll pull it to the screen like when i first came here i'm like is this them or oh yeah yeah, that's them. Yeah, I know they've been uh, focusing the majority of their efforts on the actual development and stuff. Yeah, which is it's it's the problem that I've been having too, like keeping up with the website when I'm trying to do all the blockchain stuff. You know, I know. Me too. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. I want to run. And I want to fly, but then you know, it's you got to go slow sometimes. You yeah. Know, get that. Yeah, but. Uh, in in eleven eleven news, uh, we have our yeah. first uh, set of guild members. Oh, so cool. we have the guild. I don't know how much I went into the guild last time um, because at that point it was kind of just theoretical. But now it's now it's a thing. We have uh, actually, if you want to look at uh, Mars Utah's wax wallet, you can see his guild membership card. Um, oh wow! Okay. And speaking of Mars Utah. His piece, uh, his pyramid piece, so everybody starts in the array. You know, he had pretty good sales on his array piece. His pyramid piece sold for over 4,000 wax. Yeah. Which is like, is over, it was was almost exactly $200 at the time. That's and uh, yeah, I was like flabbergasted. Like, 
wow, that's incredible that, that this is, you know, starting off that strong. Well, yes. Take us back. Can I get to Mars from here or no? Uh, yeah, I think so. Click on, uh, or wait. Um, Does the, the revenue split or somehow he show up here? I don't think so because technically okay. technically it, it mints each NFT as it's purchased from the drop. Oh, right. So it doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Oh, damn. What's Mars is? Uh, hang on. Let me see. Yeah. We'll pull it up. Yeah. If you can do that, that'd be awesome. Let's see. <clears throat> here, yeah. I did pick up a few of the uh, the pieces here. A couple of these uh, Aggies and oh, yeah. the Gilbert Fishman in the far out um, to do nice. uh, giveaways here on the show. We can give away some of these. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. I'm 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 also another aspect that I have to keep up with is the social media. So I'm trying to uh, be more active on social media, do more giveaways and stuff over there. Yeah. Do you uh, like your, m mainly on uh, Twitter or do, like are you in the Discord or where, where are you doing those those giveaways? Um, personally, most of my actual communication with people is in Discord. Oh, okay, um, in the but, in the Upland Discord or are you the eleven uh, eleven uh, Upex World, the Upex okay. World Discord. Okay. Oh, in the Upex World one, nice. Okay, yeah. So in the Upex World uh, Discord, there is a channel for each of the experiences. Um, and we have the 1111 experience in there. Um, and so that's where I post, you know, pe when people are like artists who are involved, you know, I post the updates there and they can go see, hey, we got our new guild membership card sent out, whatever. <clears throat> um, but in terms of, uh, oh, you found it? I don't know. I see Mars Utah. Uh, quadruple X and Mar Mars Utah Arts. I don't know. Yeah, I put it in the chat in the private oh, you chat. Did? Okay, cool. Um, Let's see who that was. But yeah, so most of my actual communication is in the Discord. Yeah. Um, but I am trying to now, you know, be more consistent about posting uh, updates and giveaways and stuff on the Twitter primarily. There you go. There's the the guild membership card. Lifetime membership. Nice. Yeah. And so these numbers are actually representative of statistics within 1111. So oh, okay. 1122, that's the the month and year of his first entry in 1111. Uh, 0001, that's the number of his collective. He's in the first collective. Um, 0101, the first 01 is the level at which his pyramid piece was when he entered the guild. Uh, the second zero one is the place, the rank he achieved in the guild uh, at the time of induction. And then 0123 is January 23, which is the the month and year of his induction. Very cool. And the E3 in the bottom left corner is Epic 3, which is, again, his induction date. Super cool. Is this... Um... Let's see. He can trade this or, or whatnot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if this was a, uh, what are they called? Where you, you know, non-transferable one. A, a you know? compound. Yeah. 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 I, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, I mean, it's a membership card, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's not, it is transferable technically on the blockchain, but it's not transferable in terms of what comes with it, you know? So I, I chose to make them technically transferable only in case somebody wanted to send it to another one of their wallets or something. Yeah. Or, you know, if they want to, if they want to sell it, then okay, they can, That's whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Once it's out of my hands, it's out of my hands. But really it's just representative of the fact that they are now in the guild and the guild, um, which I may have explained last time, but I, I don't remember. Uh, it's the 11 highest ranking uh, 1111 artists of all time based on USD pyramid sales. So uh, Mars Utah came in at number one. And by default, uh, the first collective of artists in the pyramid, you know, they're the first 11 in there. They're the highest ranking at the end of that first uh, epic. Um, but it'll be reevaluated on a monthly basis. So this, uh, there you go. Oh, yeah. I need to update that. More details to come. Mm -hmm. um, more details now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 
Yeah. So, so the advantage of being in the guild right now, and this may, you know, we'll, we'll uh, update it as time goes on and we have more functionality and stuff. But right now, basically, they get invited to contribute another piece. So it's the same as same functionality as a pyramid piece. It, it goes up for auction and it'll have the same functionality in UpX world. But this is a guild piece. You know, this is from one of the, the highest ranking members. So presumably those pieces may go for more. Uh, we'll see. Right on. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was very excited uh, for Mars and, and for, for you to hear that his piece went for such a high wax price. That was very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that helps. That helps. Uh, it helps everyone. It just legitimizes the whole thing and uh, and it makes your idea. Uh, it proves your idea, I feel like, you know, it's like this is going to work. So, yeah, it, it was obviously nice to have that, uh, you know, it, it income, you know, the wax coming in. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, like I said, 11.11, we 11.11 11 only takes 11 percent commission. So, you know, it's not like I was getting half of that. Um, right. Yeah, but no, but, no, no. It's just good to see things work for sure. You know? Yeah, especially in this bearish market. You know what yes. I mean? Like that's yeah. really cool that yeah. there was somebody had that that at that, and they wanted that, and they spent it. Hell yeah, yes. absolutely. No, that's that's definitely the 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 best part for me is is the gratification, like the validation of knowing, like, okay, this is working. You know, people are interested. Um, yeah, that 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 feels really nice. Yeah, um, I, I'm gonna run a, a game here of Critter Craft, and and I have a question for you while we run the game. Yeah. I'm curious, like, what your thoughts are right now on the uh, on on the entire space, like, and the conversation <laughs> of uh, bear versus the uh, bull. Like, where where do you see that we're at right now? What's your take on the whole? <clears throat> Are we about to go up? Are we going up now? Or is this, you know, where are we at? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I kind of, I, I kind of look at it like being on a ship, you know, like there's like, we're going somewhere and there's going to be different water conditions. You know what I mean? Like it'll be smooth sometimes. It'll be rough sometimes, but hopefully as long as we don't capsize and sink, we'll get there. So Right now, I I've kind of just like you know I I can see the the um my total wax balance going steadily up, which is cool mm -hmm. as as people buy, um and the dollar amount kind of fluctuating sometimes, which is a little stressful. But also, I try I try just not to think about it because ultimately, I'm doing something that I'm gonna be doing for the foreseeable future, no matter what happens. So I don't really have a strong opinion on whether we're going up or down right now. Um, my gut feeling is that we're probably going up because, you know, wax hit an all time high of like almost a dollar, right? And it's seven cents right now. Mm -hmm. So in the long run, things tend to go up, you know, if you zoom out enough. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, like if you're looking like uh, I have on the screen, it's like the wax chart and it, it's like it's got this like, you know, it's not broke. It's finally broken a, a trend line, you know, the uh, of resistance has been coming down forever Had its little. And so many of the charts look just like this, it like, you know, comes up, retests off it and it's like starting to head up towards its next uh, little zone. And th th we've never had we, we haven't had a bounce yet in the entire crypto space you know what i mean like bitcoin mm -hmm. none of it since the bears happened so i'm not saying we're like going to all-time highs this year but i i definitely think we're gonna get back into like some of these areas here you know like yeah we'll see a 20 30 40 cent wax, wax. potentially this year of course none of this is financial advice to do your own research as they say yeah um, i mean I, yeah. I I dove pretty deep into uh, into crypto and and you know charts like that and um, looking at all the predictions and using algorithms and stuff and trying to make money that way and I got wrecked and yeah. <laughs> so I'm not saying that you can't succeed that way people do um, but for me you know I I really like crypto and I like the idea and the technology. Um, but I also really like art and helping artists yeah. and 
not getting wrecked in the market. So this seems to be the better approach for me is to just kind of keep trudging forward on this goal. And no, then, uh, yeah, like I love, I, I'm very similar uh, to where, what you just said, like my history here in the space. Uh, when I first got in, there wasn't all this art and uh, all this stuff that you, you couldn't do what we can do now. You know, there was, you yeah. couldn't do the 11, 11 project, you know, in 2017, you know, right. 2016, you couldn't do it. Um, so there was a time where I was really, I, really good at trading or but like that was all that was all i was doing that was it there was no other life there was no other like when i would go out to like a uh, like a bar i felt like i was like reading the charts of the bar like that's how psycho i was about this stuff you know like yeah but yeah. like only like when i'm in that zone do i feel like i could make money trading or whatever they say what it's like 90 percent of people lose Right. And so, you know, once this last bull run came, you know, like I just like had held coins and didn't really sell anything and like focused on making art and, you know, utilizing my skills and the things that I love that way in the space and being like that, th like, this is awesome. Like, this is why I, this is what I thought I was seeing when I first got into this space was like, oh man, all these tools are going to be utilized by like, the creative fields and it's going to be amazing, you know? So like the fact yeah. that like we're doing that now is like super fun to me, you know? Yeah. So I wasn't like super bummed out when I lost a, a bunch of USD value like on these tokens when it went down. Cause it's like, I've already been through a couple cycles already of these ups and downs. And I understand like that that happens like, and it's going to happen. And, it doesn't matter, you know, like I, <laughs> yeah. I can stress and freak out about things. I've already, I've already been that version of me in yes. the space or whatever, you know, like I've, yeah. I, I don't need to keep being that way. So yeah, focus on more of the creative stuff. And, you know, I don't know. I do love trading. I do love charts. I do love all that stuff, but yeah, it's like, Oh man. It's, it, uh, it, it gets in into your brain yeah. really deep. And uh, yeah, w when, when it is that, important to you even even when you do have the overall philosophy of like ah, it doesn't matter we'll get through it like it's hard to have that mentality and also be good at what you're doing because yeah. you have to kind of care about what you're doing and then when yeah. it, when what you're doing doesn't go your way it's hard to not care that it didn't go your way you know yeah it's, yeah i think my trading style is very much like my uh playing chess style yeah. which is like i can open strong but i i don't know how to close a game you know like it's <laughs> it's, it's bad on the end but uh so i gotta come in hard first if i come in hard and then it's like i, I can destroy you we know what's gonna happen then i can pull it out same thing at the you know like i have to have like a good i have to hit it right and then you know, but if I get into having to play catch up on something, like then my mind just starts flip flopping this way and this way. It's like, well, if I pull it out here, I could move it into this one, and maybe that will go up. For, and you know, like all that yeah. lateral conversation. It's too big. Bonkers. Yeah, yeah, it is. Focus on what you love. That's the only way to do it. All right, let's play a couple of these games here and uh, give away the the four pieces. All right. So we'll go into a grub fish here. This one will be for the edgy, one of those egg, uh, eggy, the eggplants. The eggy, yeah. I got two of those. Gotta love a good eggplant. Uh, so that, good luck to you out there, winner, whoever you will be. And that one, uh, the eggy and the fish. And uh, I think yeah. there's a couple more that are, um, they're like sticker style. So yeah. they're, they're basically, it's just what you see is the outline of the whole piece like the the background is transparent um so in the game the way that'll work is you know you won't have a big rectangle around it it'll just be like a, a decal that you put on your car or just that image if you want it on a shirt or whatever so that's yeah. an interesting tactic that's, that some people are taking that i think is probably a good one for for pieces like that that aren't like an actual full i mean not to say it's not an actual full art piece but you know what i mean it's not like a a canvas Right, right, gotcha, gotcha. So you know, I've entered in my two pieces, like the the first tier. Then I'm now I got the second piece in the the auction uh, tier. Mm -hmm. um, if I can, I 
enter in like a new piece and start the process all, all over again or no once you're in the thing you kind of got to go through it um so you can have a new piece uh the next round after you get either eliminated or you go through the whole gotcha. cycle yeah okay cool cool good to yeah know. so one one piece at a time per artist very cool uh tapir you uh you won the uh the eggy so uh congratulations to you and check your whisper there on the twitch i just dropped it in there i'll open up the the board here for another round of critter craft you guys want to jump in with your exclamation point plays there and uh, they'll show up on this contestants list and we'll get another game going get out the next prize there you go oh and uh, real quick uh, i just i saw you in the chat earlier silent tone uh big shout out to you for picking up uh he he purchased one of the uh one of my hot rod hobos uh let me show you guys what we're talking about here i know i have the link up somewhere but i put out a collection just the other day and he uh he, he got in on it where the hell did they go oh here we are oh this is i'll get you i'll get us there from twitter all right you but you got big ben i i really like this one might be one of my favorite these are the 10 hot rod hobos <laughs> but uh let's see let's find big ben oh here he is yeah so silent tone picked up big ben today uh so thanks for believing in the hot rod hobos it means the world uh to me and uh yeah the next one that i'm sort of featuring today is uh this guy um it's donnie so like these are you know i did some ai generations for some hobos and then cars and then did some editing and put them together but when i went searching for this guy i put in a I, this the you know what i was hoping to have drawn for me was a, a homeless man farting in a bag and this is what came out and i just thought man he's brilliant he's so freaky that triangular uh, uh mustache goatee thingy right it's just uh, insane and then there you can see he's holding the bag with his like yeah. black glove on it's just insane like i love this stuff i love this generated art stuff that though some of the oddities of them and you know some of the weird weird ones i've got one that came out so absolutely horrifying that i'm doing some uh edits on doing some work on so i don't want to reveal it until it's uh, all good and ready but oh my god so much fun we oh, have an, uh, an ai generator in our discord and it's okay. like um I, I spend like the like you know it'll be four in the morning and then i look up and it's like almost five and all i'm doing is just like you know a cat wearing a diaper or whatever just like you know <laughs> trying to come up with the weirdest combination of some things to see what comes out and yeah. our the one that we've got it uh the bot that we've got in our discord is very heavily um like anime centric uh -huh. and uh it, it tends to land like kind of nsfw ish a little bit lots of okay. big butts when you <laughs> right. use the, if you use the word body usually a butt is coming up when it comes to <laughs> oh link to the discord yeah let me pull that up for you here as well uh, yeah, I'm just talking about I should just show you some of the monstrosities that, that I've been getting into lately. Yeah, I liked the the hashtag on that uh, Hot Rod Hobo post, fart in bag. That yeah, was, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Just probably, to... You're probably going to corner the market. Well, actually, I was, I was going to say you're probably going to corner the market on that hashtag, but maybe not. People are into some weird stuff. <laughs> you're right. That's probably... No, I mean, I've heard years ago somebody uh, um, sold a bag of trash on eBay. Mm -hmm. And if it got up to like 30 cents, they were going to put in a, a jar of fart or something like that. I don't know if they got to the jar of fart or a bag of fart. It was something like that. But I was like, man, that's amazing. That could happen. Um, all right. Let me. Uh, here's the discord on the screen. Here's the link uh, invitation to join here. And uh, where were we here? It's in the, uh, the general. That's where it's all happening these days. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, like so that's just a, I said very real techno raver dancing, but let's get into all right, very real robot butt. Okay, this is my fault. Now, since they started throwing butts at me, then I was like, what kind of butts can I make? So 
we might see a few. Um, this one I thought was really fun. A fake neon Michelangelo painting. Very real. That's what came out. I'm like, that one's amazing. Interesting. Yeah. That's what I started doing last night was uh, trying to do. This was a, a Michelangelo, a fake neon Michelangelo painting of a police car, apparently. <laughs> That's a cool police car. Yeah, right? Getting pulled over by James Dean. Yeah. Uh, All right, so... Leonardo da, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, fake, real, very real, fake Leonardo da Vinci is what I asked it to do. And this what came out. What is this AI generator? It's called Imagine, Imagine AI. I, we've actually, I've been watching the charts of it. Like this, how I stumbled into it was uh, I, oh. on Dex Tools. It was like number one. I'm like, what is this? Clicked on the website and, uh, you know, there, let's see, let's see, where is their website information? I'm sure I can just go to it. All right. Let's see. Wait a minute. I'll, I, from their Discord, that would be the easiest way to get there because I can't spell. Let's see. Here they are. Yeah, so you can you can get it from their website. Let's see. Yeah, That's I've been cool. uh, doing my best to uh, mitigate AI input Um in 1111 mm. um because what's your rules on that um so well there's a lot of laws about intellectual property and um, copyright and stuff like that that you know i i want to be aware of just in general yeah as an as an artist um but also i'm kind of following those guidelines in terms of yeah. allowing ai like it first and foremost unaltered ai art is not allowed in 1111 at all so yeah if you've been watching this and you want to participate in ai awesome um but if you've also been thinking i'm just going to do ai stuff get out of here yeah <laughs> that's, that's not what we're doing um but so in terms of copyright law and uh intellectual property and stuff you can use copyrighted work in your work as long as it is significantly transformed to the point where it's unrecognizable really as the original work. So that that's kind of my view on using AI as well. Yeah. So if you, if you want to use AI in the process, that's okay, but you have to submit the output that the AI gave you mm -hmm. and you have to show me how you changed it along the way. Fair enough. Yeah, see if it's yourself. like yeah. Yeah. That that makes uh all the sense in the world to me. Uh let's yeah. see here. I wanted to show you something. I wonder if you would allow this. Uh, let me pull it up. One second here. Okay. All righty. Got to get into my NFTs. Tick tock, tick tock. Okay, here we go. Oh, it may be down a little ways. I'll reveal it in a second. But uh, I made a, a very weird collection. Um, come on, where are you? Stop hiding from me. I'm playing the same game with the windows on my computer. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm, I'm looking all over the place. Like, So sometimes I have you down here, which is what uh -huh. I'm looking down here. I'm, st I'm still looking at what's going on on the screen, but I'm moving stuff around. I'm just going to try to search for it. Let's see. How do you start? I okay, hold on. Oh, that, there it is. Okay, wait. though, that's the collect. Okay, let yeah. Let's do left house. That'll get us there. All right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. There's no way. This is a joke. I know there's no way in hell. But um, I made a my own version of. Uh, well, I call them left digital trading cards, and you know I took some of the uh, uh, the. So they're similar. They're not the same. Uh -huh. They're not the same backgrounds. No, um, but yeah, oh. like I made a, a, a five variations of these um, left digital trading cards, and you know they only a few of them sold. And there's plans for what's there's something really crazy coming next. Um, hopefully next week we'll be able to to get it but any per person that purchased one of these is going to end up becoming a distributor of some of something and this weird game is about to start um okay 
but it's just yeah no i i wouldn't th i would not allow you to take this uh as a an 11 11 piece of art well, but, shucks. Uh, what's that the sucks yeah i said well shucks <laughs> sorry but uh no this is reserved for something else but uh no i will not be entering this in but no it's just hilarious to me um all right let's let's go hold on a second i've got um what else do i have in here besides that eggy i know i have another one but there's the um far out i like the the colors in this far out one so we'll give away this one. Oh man this fish rules i i do a lot of fish art myself and, oh cool uh, i'm a big fan of this one yeah but we'll, we'll save the fish for the end i think but okay. we'll do the far out piece from the 1111 project here so uh okay let's open the board again all right you guys you're all entered in i imagine i'll wait two seconds before i before i start the game if anybody hasn't entered in here um and then after uh after the the game um, yeah i actually have the upix world game that i could share if you oh want hell to see. yes good idea cool that would be great all right, here we go. Grub fish is starting now. You guys are going for the far out piece. So far out, man. Uh, so with your attention towards the 1111, uh, um, is there any other projects that are grabbing your attention or is there any anything else that's uh, that you're spending your time on in the in or around the space at, at the moment? Um not off the top of my head. I'm no, yeah. I just, I, I, I just been okay. so heads down on this, and uh, you know, I'm doing. Um, well, I, I've been doing the Upex podcast, or at least not not like on it every Thursday, but every Thursday when they broadcast, I'm you know backstage. I'm yeah doing notes and stuff for them, and then uh, you know Upex World streams on Twitch at Upex World Live. Anybody who's watching on Twitch, go to Upex World Live, subscribe there to see updates about what we've been, what we, what we've been talking about. Excuse me. Um, and uh, we stream over there, or he streams over there, TML, um, yeah. on uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, and sometimes Fridays at 5 p.m. Central. Um, so I attend all of those, and then when I'm not doing that, I am working on 11.11 stuff. So I've just been pretty pretty inundated with my own stuff at this point yeah you know thank me later was the very first guest i ever had on my show mm -hmm. way back the way back in the beginning it's been a minute i gotta get him back on i think it'd be good to get him in here to talk about all the stuff that's going on with it absolutely yeah mortar car congratulations yes indeed i just made the gifty link for you i'm gonna drop it on your head right now check your whisper sir it is in there now yes awesome. gifty link i'm gonna have to get with you about how you do this stuff because short right? of is, is there uh, a way to like you know you, you run the twitter giveaway somebody yeah. wins it and then right now what i what i'm doing is just hey you won send me a dm and then i will uh you know search your wax wallet address from my wallet and send you the thing is there a simpler way of doing that what is this gifty thing well you can well, i'll show you i'll pull it up on the screen here one okay. second like the uh here, let's just go to the beginning so from you know just uh this piece here i'll set it up for the next one but i won't go all the way because the the link will show up on the screen okay. but uh yeah just from more there's oh, the okay. create gift link there generate and then you know you'll sign the contract and then like a link will will come and so once i have that link i just take it over and drop it into direct dm you know to the person who oh, wanted okay cool that way it's pretty you know it keeps it the show moving i feel like for me versus yeah. like copying and pasting an address or whatever it's like i can for generate sure. the link while the game's going granted do i make mistakes sometimes yeah yeah <laughs> well i mean yeah. Uh, again, like I said, with the website, I'd rather make a few mistakes and go back and fix them, but have it done, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so at this point, you know, with, with all the things, with all the steps in the process, I'm I'm looking to cut as many corners as I can without sacrificing quality. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like there needs to, I feel like I need, well, 
I kind of do have a quality control person on my team, but like, there's only like really two of us working. So it's like me and, and Vis Nimrus and like, I'm the sloppy one. He is definitely the ones that make sure things are spelled right, but mm-hmm. I'm trying to get better at that stuff too, you know, but it's hard. Yeah. It's I mean, hard. there's so many things to focus on, you know, that. Yeah. Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses, you know, yeah. having a good partner who, who can, compliment yeah. those for you is, is we nice. were just saying though we need like four more partners we think or something you know like we guys this is so much work there's so many little corners yeah for sure and their dirt just gets in every corner gotta yeah. sweep it up all right you guys uh it's a few of you guys figured out what's going on i've uh opened up the critter craft again join in with the exclamation point play we'll give away that fish and then we'll end on the uh the eggy the eggy egg plant for the final final there or actually yeah yeah we'll do it we'll do it that way yeah that works all right so if you want to uh win that this fish this beautiful fish from the 1111 project gilbert right fishman <clears throat> by yeah. i believe kit landon is the artist on that uh yeah if you guys, yeah, you guys yeah, watching landon. you know you guys watching if you want to submit some art to 1111 um and see hold your on art. a second we got to talk about this artist's name this is not his real okay. name is it this is an artist's name right the kit landon this either should be like a porn star or like a a, a spy <laughs> or you know what i mean like that is like the 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 head of my fraternity i don't know that is an incredible <laughs> name right there well so Wrong. in in the in the eleven eleven uh application form there is a section for legal name um, because, you know, I want to make sure that whoever is submitting art, you know, is a real person and I can, yeah. you know, look them up and, and, you know, I, I want to be able to validate what's coming in and make sure, you know, that it's not just AI stuff or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and in the pyramid pieces, I ask for progress shots to validate that stuff. Um, yes, but there's also a section for, uh, how do you want to be credited for your art? So you can enter your username or display name or pseudonym or whatever, or your legal name again, if you want, uh, however you want to go, whatever you want to go by. Um, But in that intake form, I say like, give us your legal name so that we have it, but we're not going to display that unless you choose that as your display name. Yeah. Um, So I, I, in upholding that, I have no comment about, any of this damn all right all right fair play <laughs> fair play that's exciting i i yeah. prefer not to know actually you know because it might just ruin the fantasy for me so that that's better yeah uh, uh very good all right you guys i'm gonna run this uh round of critter craft here and then we'll run the last one as well um and uh we'll get we'll get out of here we'll, we'll end the show after. Well, you want to see the the? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll world. do that after this round. Sorry, I okay. forgot about that. That's definitely okay. want to see it. No problem. Definitely, definitely. All right, let me gift up this uh, link, the gifty fish link here. Um, uh, do you have a car yet in uh, Upland? I have three. Gosh, I have two. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I was, I want that third one. I, was, I really want to open a showroom. Yeah, I have, uh, I have a van which I got was the first one that I got. Nice. Um, and then, then I got a, like one of the crossover type ones. Um, and then like a real proper race car. Oh, wow. Yeah. I got like some truck and then, you know, some, uh, I don't know what it is. Well, I can't remember what it's just like kind of like a normal car. It feels kind of normally, you know, just like yeah. a car you would drive to, to the grocery store, a daily driver. Yeah. yeah It'll be that. interesting to see, you know, how, like obviously we have racing, but you know, you can keep them implementing and keep implementing, keep implementing things to where you know eventually they could build it out to be very much like real life, where you just have a daily driver that you have to drive around to do stuff. You know, yes, that'll be interesting yeah. to see. That's what I'm thinking, like ride share. Yeah, you know, setting it up that way. Uh, Prime Rogue, uh, you I can never say people's names, but you want it. You want it? You want to try saying that guy's net What that? What, what is that name? Prime Rogue Inc. is my guess. Prime Rogue. Okay, yeah. I've. I've. Okay. I just my 
dyslexic eyes just like tr- forget it i'm gonna start sounding crazy if i try to say that but yeah. uh i i got it before i remember it now yeah no a, a lot of people a, a lot of creative people especially have have trouble you know oh, yeah processing and outputting stuff but you know I, i've noticed as a member of the creative community for a long time that uh sometimes some people with the with with the biggest best craziest ideas are are, are it's like you get a certain amount of brain points like you yeah. can only do many things with those points and allocate them yeah. to certain areas can tell you the history of the french fry but can't fold a napkin yeah exactly yep. exactly yep. yeah <laughs> Yeah, very cool. Do you want to show, pull this uh, Upix World to the screen here? Though? Yeah, cool. sure. Let me uh, Hell yeah. pull it up here. And this is, I'm going to have to play a little bit of window Jenga here. Oh. Or uh, what am I trying to say? What is that What is that puzzle that you, uh, I think you have to slide the pieces around to get the other pieces into place? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, like that. I forget what that's called. But I love that game as a kid. Or I used to love that game. Or I used to get the plastic ones with the little puzzle. Like uh, you got to make the face, put the, all the squares in the. Right, right, right. That one was fun. Okay, so I'm sliding you down here. And then I will share my screen. If all I right. can. Let me pull you up here. Okay, present, share screen. This one. Oh, I'm gonna save that last eggplant too for the Action Family Club card carrying members giveaway. The one for the dudes that hold the club cards. The oh, Action cool! Family Club card. Yeah. So, uh, are you there? We are. Here yeah. comes. Awesome. There we go. Look here. All right. So, this is the closed alpha. Are you getting audio there? no no audio. okay that's okay it's just yeah. like ethereal uh music gotcha so i'll talk to this guy in a second but first i want to show uh, you look at that yo that's awesome there's the 11 11 building right there that's great so eventually like right now you can't go into this but eventually you'll be able to walk in right here <laughs> i like that they gave me a little mailbox uh-huh. right here too so that this is where i check my mail yeah and uh and back here um no nope, not there where is it it's gonna be there it is oh a little toilet yeah that's where i go at number oh. 11. Uh-huh. That's where you go, number eleven. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. But so eventually, you'll be able to um, go into the building here, just walk yeah. in these doors, and then this is like that the mall aspect. You know, this is this is the mall in general, mm-hmm. and then you go into this store, quote unquote, um, and on each level, uh, you'll be able to see a a different gallery essentially so this whole thing is going to be a gallery um this bottom level will have uh well the first level of the pyramid so this whole thing is kind of an inverted pyramid in terms of yeah physical structure but uh it actually goes in the opposite direction in terms of number of pieces so at the bottom level you'll have the first pyramid level which is 11 pieces and then uh the next level you'll have 10 9 8 so on and so on until at the very top you have the one remaining pinnacle piece yeah um so all that will be displayed inside here and we're gonna have a roof deck too um so that'll all be coming fairly soon uh and uh yeah so for now the demo is uh is this you go over to um there's this board right here, which I believe will eventually become like the kind of, you know, news update billboard for all things UpX World. Yeah. Uh, right now it says at UpX World, our goal and purpose for existing as Web3 Layer 2 platform is to add value to the Layer 1 metaverse, metaverses and NFT projects we work with. So Upland, 1111, Hyde Park Ninjas. 
Um, the way we do that is through creation of added gamification and utility through experiences. Our mission beyond our four con core four functionality, core functionality is to disrupt the multi-billion dollar gaming industry, leveraging the Web3 technologies and communities to redistribute global wealth through the decentralization of our platform's revenue streams. So that's what I was talking about earlier with, um, you know, whereas now if you make an in-game purchase, it pretty much just goes directly to the game companies. Um, but we're giving people an opportunity, specifically with 1111, you know, you buy an 1111 pyramid piece, you win it at auction, and then you get, oh, I, I came close to this guy. <laughs> He's talking to me. Yeah. Um, but so with the decentralized revenue, you buy an 1111 pyramid piece at auction and um, and then you are entitled to proceeds when players buy in-game items with that art on it. Um, so instead of just going into this funnel directly to the corporations, it's getting distributed to the owners of 1111 art. So oh. this is the uh, main functionality of the game right now, which is uh, to collect these little things. He says, hi, this place is awesome. I want to get my friends and bring them back, but I need to power up my rocket's core. Can you help get my ship going by collecting the energy? I need to power it up. So uh, yeah, you just run around and collect these little things. Yeah. Nice. And it's kind of a, you know, a little, a little mission to accomplish and a way to explore the, uh, the terrain and everything yeah um super and, fun yeah and over here we have whoa a, a mine cart which you press f and this takes you over to you know i've been mentioning the hyde park ninjas so yeah this take, takes you over to their area and their whole thing is um it's these two guys so like i'm i'm at the head of 1111 doing the art gallery thing mm -hmm. um the hyde park ninja experience is uh these two guys oh did i lose control here what happened um they're still oh, on the, the cart I, yeah yeah i had to press f to get out uh so yeah the hyde park ninjas are these two two guys who are um martial arts fighters and instructors um, who are collaborating with Upex World to create this whole experience. And so you will come over here and uh, there'll be, you know, like a, an instructor who gives you a quest and everything. And so, so cool. yeah, so, so these are the two main things that are uh, kind of at the forefront of Upex World right now. And you'll, you'll get to see it when it launches on Steam. Yeah. Wow. This is awesome. Yeah. Super exciting. So yeah. What is this built on? Uh, it is built on Unity. It is Unity. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, it looks nice. It looks really nice. Yeah, it's exciting to see the first uh, iteration of that. Definitely. Definitely. All right on. All right. Well, let's pull up this last race of the day. This is for the Action Family Club card carrying members. You guys know who you are. Every day we do a race for the people that have been holding the Action Family Club cards. If you want to get one, they're on Nefty under the Left House Collection the, on the Drops page. Um, all right. Top three will win glorious prizes today. On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> and they're off, folks. I always I feel like some of these songs, like this sounds like a, like a bad car commercial, you know. No <laughs> yeah. money down. Has 1999. Oh, man. Money back guarantee percent, you know, to say words like that. You're selling yeah. a car. These are some uh, some wild hairstyles for some. Uh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! National runners. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Some ex some amazing expressions on some of them too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh well, we've done it. O Z Y Y, you've done it. Who are your counterparts in in prize winning today top three mtf king kong neckbreaker and ozyy congratulations to you congratulations yay. yay all right i'll send you guys your glorious prizes once i go off the air it looks like the uh, nft gamer tv looks like they are uh, they're playing a cryptia have you checked out a cryptia yet it's taco's new card game no in fact I, I i fun. i only know of taco from people saying taco in in the ah. 
in the crypto context, but I have not checked it out at all. Um, but maybe I will. What is it? Um, Taco is a pretty solid project, and uh, you know they they've been adding games to their ecosystem. Then uh, uh, Crypty is their the second game, but I would say it's kind of more like the first game. Is the first actual game was more like you're clicking a button come back in a few hours click that button again but this is an actual oh, like okay. card game where you know you have some strategy and choices and stuff like that we we kind of focused on it yesterday and uh, i learned a whole bunch just by you know bringing it to the to the show and like people were you know t teaching me things and stuff like that it was awesome but it's a uh, it's just a cute little monster sort of card game. You're in a little dungeon, you know, you got your character, you've got your health. Oh, points, okay. and you're fighting little things. You got little health and, and weapons and shields and things that can hurt you. And I don't know. It's just like it moves real, real well. The music, the sound effects, everything around it. But like that whole ecosystem, you know, and on the wax blockchain it is probably, I think, maybe the the top of the notch you know it's they're, they're so so clean and so such a good the way that they they've built their things the way that things work they have not had like a, a drop in their price you know nothing has not gotten cheaper uh you know cool. throughout the 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 mark the the book the bear so it's been kind of in that way yeah uh good that 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 i think is representative of good functionality yeah. to their to their project absolutely so i think that's where we'll go we'll head into them on uh, as we raid on out of here into uh our normal lives cool yeah. yeah and uh just in closing i just want to say everybody you know if you're on twitch right now or if you're ever on twitch uh look up upx world live upx world yeah. live all together um that's where you can catch streams uh, updates about 11 11 and upx world um and then 11 11 all spelled out E-L-E-V-E-N, E-L-E-V-E-N, NFT dot gallery. Um, that's where you can look at the Web 2 version of all the 1111 stuff and link to uh, the you know sales and everything. Um, and you can also submit your art there. So if you want to submit some art, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It doesn't have to be super complex. Um, you know, it just has to be yours. So whatever you want to submit, go to 1111 NFT gallery. There's a, a link to submit your work. That'll take you to a Google form fill out the form submit your stuff and then uh hopefully we'll get you in the next round of the array yeah right on man super cool project uh super fun chat thanks for 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 doing it thanks for absolutely time anytime man being here and thank you to stirs too for showing up for the first hour and all you guys for showing up in the chat it's been a great day all right nft gamers where we're going next see you guys later thank you bye <laughs>